Hey there, golfers. I'm Drew Mahold of Second Swing Golf. I'm joined by Thomas Campbell. He's a master club fitter here at Second Swing Minnetonka. Thomas, how are you doing today? I'm doing good. Uh, this is an interesting test that we're coming up. Um, I have never tested really golf balls on track, man, to see any differences. So I'm really curious to see what happens. Yeah, we've got, this is, isn't your typical test where maybe we've done like, you know, like a two premium modern golf balls. We've got golf balls from all different phases of, of the sport, really. We've got Titleist Professional 90, uh, Titleist Pro V1X, Top Flight XL, Titleist Velocity, the Precept Lady IQ Plus, and the Pinnacle Practice Range Ball. Prototypical golf ball you'll find on a driving range at your local golf course. So all different types of golf balls. There's some really firm ones or some really soft ones. Uh, I'm, I have no idea what to expect, except that you, know, you might see the best performance out of the Pro V1X, I would imagine. But after that, it could, anything could happen. Yeah, I'm really curious to see what happens with regards to drivers, seven irons, and wedge when I hit full swings to see the spin and the, kind of the total distance. Right, so Thomas mentioned the three clouds that we're going to hit, or Ted, he's going to hit. He's going to hit three with each ball with his 52 degree wedge, uh, his seven iron, and his driver. So actually, we'll start with seven iron and then go 52 degree wedge and then the driver. And we should be able to see some pretty stark differences between just golf balls and, you know, kind of adding on to that is the impact of a ball fitting, right? Because I think. We've preached so much about club fitting and the differences that the equipment can make for golfers out there, but ball fitting is just as important, right? Very important. It's very important to work with your fitter to make sure you talk about what you're trying to achieve in your golf game, whether you're trying to hit it higher, lower, if you want more control around the green. Different golf balls definitely matter. All right, Thomas, here's the title of professional. We'll start right. with that. Used to play this golf ball back in the day. Really? Yep, yep. Love this golf ball. Yep. Things are a little different now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm going to anticipate this may not quite go as far as sure. golf balls yeah. of 2020, but we'll, we'll find out. Yeah, and I mean, it's, it's also been used, so we should, we should you know, uh, make note of that as well. Like, so a few of these are kind of used, but then, you know, a few of them are kind of brand new as well. So that yep. might impact things a little bit, but overall, it should be the construction of the golf ball that determines, you know, the, the data and whatnot that we yeah. see. And for those who haven't, you know, watched you hit seven irons, you know, what's the typical distance of your, you know, what your gamer ball and your seven iron that you play, like in tournaments and whatnot? 177, 178 is kind of my carry distance okay. for normal seven iron. Yep. Okay, so that's what you're playing, yep. you know, out on the course. And my club speed is also usually around about 89 miles an hour. When I was right at 89 miles an hour. Okay. Just losing a little bit of pull speed right now. Right, with the yeah. Professional here. Yeah, pretty good dispersion. Just about you know, ten to fifteen yards, probably shorter than than you're maybe used to with the ball you do play right now. Yeah. Well, let's find out and see how it compares to these, these other golf balls. Yeah, let's do it. Let's yeah. let's go right to. Uh, why don't we do a Pro V1, brand new Pro V1X, okay. brand new. Well, we're noticing a little bit of a discrepancy in you know the distance for sure. Yeah, that last one didn't quite catch perfect, but even still, you'll notice that it still carried 175. Right. I think 177, 178 was my average distance. Mm -hmm. With the uh, professional, it was about 165, I believe. Yeah, so quite a big difference in distance. Did you notice? Separation. I mean, in terms of feel, obviously there had to have been a little bit of a difference there, playing oh. the professional versus the Pro V1X. It's no, it's night and day, huge yeah. difference. The uh, Pro one axis feels more solid off the club base, absolutely. The professional, I don't know how to describe it, I mentioned, <laughs> feels like butter. Yeah. Feels like those rubber, as a, as a wound golf ball, it feels like, feels like those rubber bands are like breaking oh. as I'm hitting this <laughs> club here. So, <laughs> yeah, it's a completely different feeling. <laughs> For sure. Well, yeah. now we'll get to another completely different feeling. Okay. I'll give you the uh, Top Flight XL. All right. So that might present a little bit of a different feel for you. <laughs> I might have also played this golf ball when I was younger growing up as oh, well. Yeah. I think we all did at some point. Pretty 
good. Yeah. Now the feel, I'm sure, was just like, I mean, probably super <laughs> firm and kind of not, I don't know, maybe pleasing or not pleasing, but it's definitely a, a more vibrations in your hand when you make contact, I'm sure. Yeah, I definitely wouldn't want to be hitting that first thing in the morning <laughs> in the spring when it's Especially 35 it degrees out. Imagine hitting that one thin, you know, in cold weather. That'd be tough. <laughs> that would hurt. Yep. All right, well, now we'll go another uh, hardcore golf ball. Well, this is going to be a brand new uh, Titleist Velocity. Okay. So kind of a more modern construction of a, you know, firmer golf ball. Yep. So kind of like your, your value, value entry level kind of golf yeah. ball, distance mm -hmm. golf ball, essentially. Yep. So, yep. Well, that's three with the velocity. I mean, distance-wise, it kind of kept up uh, with the Pro V One X there a little bit for you. So yeah, that's obviously pretty close. The, the difference you would see with these two golf balls, I think, the stark, more stark difference would be around the greens when you're hitting chip shots and um, trying to control the ball on the greens. I think you'll notice the difference between the velocity and a Pro V. But distance-wise, I think it's pretty competitive between those two. Yeah. Well, and this is designed to be a distance ball. Yeah. Like as you mentioned, around the green. The Pro B1, Pro one x is obviously going to feel a lot better for players to be able to stop the ball around mm -hmm. the green and give a little better feel on the putting green as well. Yep, so, yeah, for sure. All right, well, now we'll go to something that probably should feel a little softer because we got the Precept Lady IQ Plus. Okay. So this definitely is designed for players, you know, that don't swing as fast right. to help generate a little bit more speed. Yeah. Um, fly a little bit higher now. It's probably not, obviously doesn't suit my golf swing, yeah. but it's just going to be interesting to see what actually happens here yeah. kind of as part of the test. Yes, this so. should be kind of a, a tell for, you know, how important ball fitting is. I mean, this is a kind of an extreme difference. You know, you play in a ball that's very soft, but again, ball fitting is important and we'll, should see the numbers kind of tell that here. Yeah, I mean, we can already see that. I've picked up. Yeah, we definitely have seen that already. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Between the top flight and the uh, Tyler's Professional, I've picked up probably 10, 15 yards. Oh yeah, smoke that one. Wow. You wonder too, maybe if, uh, you know, this is just kind of uh, an on the fly hypothesis here, but you think maybe those, uh, uh, you know, low compression soft golf ball would also maybe provide lower spin to enhance that distance as well. I haven't looked at the numbers, maybe that, that's just more a theory at this point. But. That last shot definitely had the lowest spin out of all the yeah. shots that I hit. It was like 5,600 okay. RPMs. Uh, I did notice when we were hitting that top flight, I was getting spin rates close to 7,000 RPM, okay. which I was very surprised by because I thought that the harder golf ball right. would get the less spin, but it actually yeah. was quite a point. spinny golf ball. Mm -hmm. But I'm sure, again, feel here probably massively different to the past few you had been hitting. Yeah, very, very soft. Yeah. yeah. All right, well, the last one here, we got the pinnacle kind of practice range ball here. All right, so it'll be interesting to see what happens with regards to distance with like your, your range ball and versus yeah. your, your normal ball. And this is one I'm really curious about because, you know, at any golf course, obviously you go to and you hit balls to practice with or whatever the case may be, you're, you know, you're hitting a ball like this and, yep. you know, there's obviously a big difference between the ball you're playing and something like that. Oh, wow. I feel like I hit that good, too. Look at the spin on that. 7,400. Yikes. That is an 1,800 spin difference from the last two shots. Because you had, I think, 5,600 with the, your last shot with the Precept Lady oh. Plus. That was like 170 to 190 total distance. Yeah. Yeah. Now, I'm sure this feels you know, pretty firm too in comparison to, especially, I mean, hitting the, the precept ladies ball, 
just yeah. now, but also in general, a pinnacle practice ball should feel pretty firm. It's almost as firm as that rock flight. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is a good example of why you should never play a range ball on a golf course. Look how much shorter that thing's going. Yeah. Yeah. It's crazy. Or even, you know, taking it a step further, even kind of judge your, uh, you know, distances, for example, on the driving range when you're hitting these balls and trying to, yeah. you know, gap out your bag with those golf balls, it's going to be a problem because this is clearly a big difference. It is. It's a little deeper. Yeah, a little bit further. Well, is this, uh, does this kind of line up with, you know, after hitting the seven iron, a little bit of your expectations here? Uh, yes and no, actually. I might have thought that top flight might have gone a little further. Yeah. That surprised me the most. That was, I thought, You'd being think a, a ball that rock hard and firm would kind of bounce or kind of you know a little bit more uh, speed off impact yeah right? yeah that was probably the biggest surprise for me and the other surprise was actually the lady golf ball the lady iq preset, yeah. how far that thing actually went well that was seven iron we've still got wedge and driver to test out as well and see yeah, let's what the do that are, so. all right so 52 degree wedge this is a wedge that you're generally hitting a full swing with as well so we're not yep. um you know like it'd be different if 56 or 60 degree or whatever else you have in your bag where sometimes you're hitting Maybe a half swing, but here this is kind of your full swing. What would the typical yardage be for 52 degree out on the course? I hit this about 125 to kind of 130, 120, 130, depending on whether I'm trying to do a 1030 swing or a full swing. Sure, okay. Um, the reason why I chose this one is it's probably the spinniest wedge in, in my bag. Okay. As you mentioned, the 56, I don't quite sing that one as full, so that one doesn't yeah. quite spin as much, but if I had a full swing with this, it's gonna spin probably the most. Okay. Yeah, so. All right, so we're back to the Titleist Professional. Kind of go back in the same order we did with the seven iron. Okay. Nice. That one had some extra spin on it. Yeah, second one didn't quite spin as much as the first and the third. Yeah. Well, after three with the Tyler's professional, I mean, obviously, I'm sure you, it just feels, <laughs> the first swing you had, it all feels awful. <laughs> yep. Didn't quite tear this one up yet, so it should be good for another couple of drivers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're getting close, yep. probably. But that's the other thing, too, with durability with golf balls these days in, you know, 2020 versus yeah. playing like a professional or a tour ball out or anything like that. That golf ball's yeah. not going to last. Oh, no. Yeah. <laughs> well, here's a Pro V1X again. Okay. So we'll see if there are any differences there. I mean, there obviously was, you know, 10 to 15 yards difference with the seven iron, so yep. should be something noticeable here. Yeah, with the bull gun a little shorter, it's probably not gonna be 10 to 15 yards, right. but this should be a pretty similar kind of ratio yeah. I'd expect. That's good. That worked out. So feel differences, and then obviously the performance was, you know, extra 10 yards probably on average. Yeah, it was going about 10 yards further, and it was also very consistent. I think the spin rate with it was right around yeah, about 10,000 every single time mm -hmm. that I hit this. Probably yep. one X, so. Feel, I, I would imagine yeah. same kind of difference. <laughs> I mean, compared to the Titleist Professional, this thing, you know, it, it's, Obviously, I'm used to playing this particular golf ball, so it feels much more solid. Yeah. Not like rock solid, but yeah. just solid off the face. It's just the perfect combination yeah. of you know, Correct. both firm and, and soft. So. Exactly. Yeah, that's probably the right definition right there. Mm -hmm. It doesn't feel like butter as soon as you hit right. the shot. Yeah. Well, this next golf ball is not going to feel like butter. <laughs> you got the top flight XL again. <laughs> that is a crazy difference in spin. About 3,000 yeah, RPMs. That. Yeah, I know. Yeah. You got 7,000 here, and we have 
every single one with the Pro V was over uh, over ten thousand. That's you don't see that very often. Gross. All right. Well, now we can transition to the Titleist Velocity. Okay. So kind of a another you know distance ball, uh, but kind of with a modern construction to it versus the top flight or uh, I guess the professional as well. What do you think of that one? You know, definitely still in the firm feeling yeah. category with, with wedge off the club face. Um, thought it was interesting. It was spinning about eighty-five to nine thousand. Yeah, we got. I think. So, well, I think the first one was eighty or eight, and then yep. it was kind of in that eight thousand four hundred to five hundred, and then it did get up to nine thousand with this yep. last one. But yeah, yeah. Well, the thing uh, I'm noticing is just as I'm peeking at the spin rate every single time. Is this huge differences in spin with with a wedge? You know, it's yeah. going to be very important when you you wedge your scoring clubs. Right. So it's important to make sure you know what it's going to do every single time. Right. Because so. one thing I noticed too is the, with the Pro V was that the ball like you know your carry distance was like 129, and then it would the total distance would be 127. So it's coming back a couple yards. Yep. And then you know here with the ones that aren't spinning as much, obviously it's either jumping forward a little bit or it's kind of staying at that same arc, which can make a big difference on the greens. Well, if those greens are firm, say in the middle of summer, haven't had much rain or anything like that. There's no chance you're going to stop it as fast. Right. You get less oh, yeah. spin, so. Absolutely. Well, let's get to what should be a little softer golf ball here. The pre Precept uh, Lady IQ Plus. Even on that one, you laid back a little bit of the club speed there. Yeah. That and one I hit right out of the screws. Yeah, then yeah. You, you smoked it in the center of the face. Yeah. All right. I'm a, again, same thing in terms of feel. Soft, I imagine. Yeah, just feels soft off the face. Not like tightless professional soft. Right, That's right. a different kind of soft. It's like a solid soft. I don't know okay. how to explain it. Well, you can yeah. definitely <laughs> tell the difference is what you're saying. Yeah, All right. exactly. Last one here, pinnacle practice range, okay. or range ball. Well, that kind of surprised me with the spin. I didn't think that it would spin as high as it did. I would have expected it to be the lowest spinning ball. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, overall, looking at the wedges, the distance is, with, with you know, exception to the Titleist Professional, the distance is all pretty similar. And then I think there's just some differences in spin that may be created, you know, the maybe five to six yard differences that you see with the rest of those golf balls besides that Professional. All right, well, let's hit some tee shots now. Now this okay. is where we're going to see some real differences in, especially distance. I would expect that with the ball traveling further that we're going to see a little more separation. For sure. Right, we should. And that's yeah. going to be especially interesting to note as well. So we can uh, get you back to the Titleist Professional to start things off. like I crushed that. There you go. Now, those of you that have uh, been watching our channel know that Thomas regularly hits tee shots over 300 yards, carries it somewhere in the, what, like 280? Yeah, about 275, 280. Yeah. yeah. So, and that's with his gamer ball. So, obviously, this is, you know, you thought you hit that pretty solid in the center of the face. Yeah. And he, he hits it, you know, the carry of 255. 280 total. That's 20 plus yards of difference right yeah. there. I'd say as we're testing this, pay attention to these two numbers right here. Ball speed and smash factor. Ball smash, smash, smash factor. That one I feel like I crushed. The ball speed was only like 152, smash factor 138. So yeah. I'd expect normally I'm around about 148 to 150 most of the time. Yeah. So. 
with the smash. And then your ball yep. speed's usually in that 164, 65 range. Correct, yep. Interesting. Club speed didn't change. That's obviously my golf swing, but. <laughs> I felt like left face a little open on, but still. But still, I mean, we're yeah. looking at 20 to 30 potentially yards of, of difference. Yeah. And what you would usually hit. Now we're going to see that with when you go to the Pro V1X here. Much better. Yeah, that was smashed. One sixty-eight ball speed. That's among the highest I've seen from you. Yeah, those that first and that third swing was probably the one, couple of the best swings that I've probably put on the ball this year, actually. Yeah, yeah, those are good. And again, you know, if we look at these circles up top, we got the Pro V One X in the green, and then the orange one that has professional. You're seeing twenty-five plus, maybe thirty yards of difference. Uh, just in total distance, and again, the carry is similar as well. I think you're around 255 or so yeah. to 250 with the professionals. That's big numbers it's right there. a lot there. of big, big difference. Yeah. All right, well, now we'll go back to something that probably, yeah, it might go as far, I guess. We'll go to the top flight XL. Well, that's yeah. pretty solid, all things considered. That's, yeah. We didn't know what to expect, and that's, you know, that's pretty solid results for the Top Flight XL. Yeah, I'm a little surprised at actually how far this thing went. It uh, didn't carry quite as far, but it rolled out a little bit further. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. yeah, well, now let's get to the Tylus Velocity. The three dots. Wow. Ugh. Just hitting my stride. Yeah, look at that. You got three, three dots in basically the same spot. Uh, all right. All right, now we'll switch back to the uh, ladies' precept. Okay. IQ plus. If you got six more swings in you, Thomas? I got plenty of golf swings left. <laughs> As you can see, those last three swings, I'm just getting started. It's true. Those were right, right on top of each other. It doesn't get much more uh, of a smaller dispersion than that. So now, in terms of feel, obviously the last couple have been firmer, and this one, the ladies, should it's, be a little softer, right? It's soft. Yeah. It's definitely soft. Now, would you expect a softer ball like that to keep up in distance? Because, I mean, that was, uh, you know, it's, it's still over 300 yards there. I wouldn't expect it to maybe go quite as far. Mm -hmm. I do recall in 2019, uh, my golf spy coming out with an article talking about how golf, golf balls that are soft they're gonna maybe deliver a little bit less ball speed. Okay. So less ball speeds probably yeah. mean less distance. Yeah, and I'm sure you'll, it should, I mean, a lot of times you should notice a bigger difference too with a faster swinger. Might be a little right. Yeah, it's fine. Yeah, that's pretty good. Yep. Three solid swings. Just a tad lower in smash factor, I think, for that one compared to, you know, the, the top flight in the Pro B1X and then, uh, the velocity as well. Yeah, a little bit less ball speed. That last one, my club speed was what 109, what I picked out about 111, I think. Yeah. So I could be slowing down, or that might have just been an off swing too. But, right. Yeah. Well, we got three more swings left with the, we got the pinnacle practice range ball here. Okay. My theory is that this would be a pretty big difference. Yeah, 
Interesting. Well, you are striping the driver, my friend. Yeah. Look at that. <laughs> Look at those circles. They are very, very close to the center line, and they're all very small. Yeah, I'd, I'd take uh, those 18 drives any day. Right. Those are terrific swings, and we got some good data out of it, too. We did. Well, speaking of the data, should we kind of dive deeper a little bit and see if there's anything we can really dissect? Yeah, let's do yeah. that. So we're going to separate these, uh, all these shots that I hit between wedge, seven iron, and driver and kind of just okay. dive a little bit deeper and see if there's anything, maybe a couple of different pointers per, per uh, ball that we looked at. Um, one thing I, I noticed with the ball speed, and this is probably going to be pretty consistent all the way through, was the Titleist Professional 90 ball speed was quite significantly lower than the others. Yeah. So 93 miles an hour. Um, the other one's hovering around 100. Hovering around about 100, correct, yeah. yeah. So who knows on the right side, the carry distance was quite significantly shorter because the ball speed was less. Mm -hmm. My club speed was basically 85 miles an hour plus or minus two, two mm -hmm. miles an hour. So that was very, very consistent every single time. Um, spin is an important one to assess when you're looking at wedges because you yeah. obviously want spin consistency. Um, so if we look at, for example, consistency, one thing that stood out to me was the Titleist Probi 1X was spinning just over 10,000 RPMs, but very consistent, so yep. plus or minus 117. You've got the Professional that was spinning close to that as well, but notice the consistency right. was kind of a little bit off, but it was going less distance yeah. as well. Look, look at the velocity too, they're not as consistent there. Yeah. Yeah, so we had... Speaking of kind of the velocity, you know, so it was less spin with velocity. Tough Light XL had quite significantly right. less spin with the wedge as well. So it's not going to be as much stopping power with, with that particular ball. Um, the pinnacle was, which was interesting with the, with the wedges, was right around about um, mm -hmm. 10,000 RPMs as well with, with consistency as well. So that was kind of interesting there to see that the pinnacle and the Pro V1X Oh, sorry, the, the pinnacle range ball and the Progo 1X were pretty consistent with regards to yeah. spin rate numbers. Um, if we look at carry distance, the Titus Professional 90 was carrying 117 yards, and then everything else was carrying basically 128. Yeah, you got 125 to 130 yeah, for the had, most part. We had there. three balls that were carrying about 128. That was the late preset Lady, the Titus Velocity, and the Pro V1X. And then the top flight XL and mm -hmm. the range ball were about 125. Interesting, yeah. I mean, it's a little bit, some of the things in here are surprising, but then there's also some that you kind of maybe would expect. I think the professional being shorter, and that's going to go across the board. Something we would probably expect, but then kind of the consistency. I thought the pinnacle and the wedge was kind of surprising with the, with the range ball. But, uh, but yeah, this is, you know, it's clearly the difference really is spin to me because yep. if you're playing a top flight or velocity, you know, you're not going to stop the ball. Clear with that difference in spin nearly as much as, you know, like the Pro V1X, for example. So we've almost got 20 years of technology here with between the Titus Professional and the Pro V1X. The Pro V1, Pro V1X kind of came out, you know, in the early 2000s. We'll notice the difference in carry distance between those two. So quite, yeah. you know, 11 yards. Yeah, plus with the Pro speed. V1X, they've been yeah. updating that. And, and, you know, Titus has been, you know, improving it over and over every two years for almost 20 years now. It's because that first iteration was in early, two, I think 2001 or 2000. And now in 2019, they have their latest model and that's what we were hitting here. So yep. they've been making improvements to that over and over in the professional obviously has, you know, it's, they haven't released a professional model yep. uh, for 20 plus years, or I think it's been a long time. So uh, that's you know, the difference technology, the materials used, clearly a difference. Yeah, so here's your kind of distance with the wedges right here. You'll notice a range from about 100 and carry distance from about 117 up to almost 130 between them all. So yep. quite significant difference. Seven iron. We'll notice my club speed was between 89 and 90 miles an hour, almost identical, basically 89 point something with every yeah. single one there. Um, so I did a pretty good job there. Um, ball speed separation between them all. And this is going to be across the board, same every single time. The Titleist Pro V, sorry, the Titleist Professional 90 ball speed was 116 miles an hour. Uh, and then we've got three balls, essentially, that was the Preset Lady, the Velocity, and the Pro V1X that were around about 126 yep. miles an hour. So big kind of separation there. Um, the Top Flight XL was 122, and the 
pinnacle practice ball was also 122. So more ball speed is going to equal kind of more yeah. distance across the board. Um, if we scroll to spin rate, I found it really interesting that the Pro V1X was the lowest spinning ball out of every single ball we hit. Yeah. I might, I was, I thought that the range ball or the top height XL might have been a little lower spinning because it's a rock. Yeah. But interesting that the Pro V1X, you know, spins a little bit less than everything else. Now, I obviously was hitting the ball high enough to be able to stop the ball on the green. So if that span yeah. and carry distance, you'll know it was stopping within six sure. yards. So spin rate's not an issue. The fact that it was spinning less, essentially, is going to cause that ball to go a little bit further than everything else. Yeah. Um, we had a couple of balls that were spinning in the 7,000 range. We had the Pinnacle Practice Ball, 7,300 RPMs. We had the Top Flight XL, 7,100 RPMs, which is really interesting because, as I mentioned, I thought that would have been maybe a little lower right. spinning golf ball. And the Top Flight XL was at 7,300 for the wedge. So, I mean, you're talking yeah. 200 <laughs> RPM difference from 7 iron to wedge. That's interesting, and, I mean, you, you, that should be happening. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, I mentioned my carry distance, normal carry distance is about 177, 178. Well, I was 177.4 today with the Pro V1X, which is why I, I mm -hmm. play that a golf ball in that uh, premium category, essentially, yeah. because I know my carry distance and is very important yeah. to me. Um, professional 90 was 15 yards less. Mm -hmm. um, That's a big deal. It's a big, big difference. So technology over 20 years has done its job. Top Flight XL was about nine yards less. Velocity was about the same. Um, preset was also, lady ball was also about the same. And then the practice ball was about 10 yards less. So those yeah. players that are range rats and tr trust their numbers on, from range and take to the golf course might be a little bit off. Yeah, because yeah. that's, that's one thing with, you know, with the wedge, we didn't see a whole lot of difference in distance between the range ball and, and the Pro V1X. But here you see 10 yards uh, of, ca of carry distance difference between Pro V1X and the, the, the range ball, which, uh, you know, if you're, Again, like if you're gapping your bag based on your range distance, you know, that's, a bit, that's a big difference. That's a, basically a club, you could say, on the course that you might be hitting the wrong club and that could cause some problems. Yeah, it was, it was a, about one club distance between yeah, the range ball and mm -hmm. the ball that you know, I typically play. A driver is what I was excited about because I'm always yeah. interested to see how a golf ball performs in regards to distance. The club speed was 110 to 111 miles an hour every single time, mm -hmm. so that's very consistent for this testing purposes. Um, the Titleist Professional 90, 152 mile an hour ball speed. I mentioned earlier, pay attention to this ball speed and smash factor number. So yep. 152, 1.38. Yep. So quite different compared to everything else that was kind of in the mid 160s, mm -hmm. smash factor with 147 to 1.50. 1 so yeah. a huge, huge difference. You know, and one thing to note too is your consistency with hitting the ball in the center. Cause like, if you look across the board here, uh, you're hitting, you know, your consistency was like 0, 0.00 with all of them. And so it's not like you were miss hitting yeah. the professional three times, you know, exactly at that level. Like you were hitting in the center still and it's just literally that big of a difference in smash factor. And that's, again, that's attributing to the kind of older construction and the model of the golf ball. And also, if you look at this right screen, you'll notice how the circle is also larger too. Yeah. So it was going shorter. You'd think club that's going to go a little shorter may, may have a better dispersion because it doesn't have a chance to get up more offline. Right. But it was a larger dispersion and also um, going significantly shorter. Mm -hmm. So kind of big difference there. Um, speaking of ball speed, the Titleist Pro V1X 166.8 ball speed was the highest of them all. It was the highest by about two miles an hour. Two miles an hour. Yep. Um, the Titleist Velocity was 16465 um, and then you've got the Pinnacle Practice and the Precept Lady IQ Plus were around about 162. Mm -hmm. so. I was surprised at how much they, how close kind of it was really. I mean, obviously the Pro V1X was kind of the best performing ball in terms of distance. That was kind of what we would have expected coming in. Um, but then, you know, and you had the Titus Velocity, kind of another newer modern golf ball, distance uh, kind of oriented that performed nearly as close to that dispersion by the way with the velocity was really, <laughs> really uh, incredible. But yeah. those two balls kind of the, the fastest and the longest, we should expect that. But I didn't think the Precept Lady Ball, Top Flight XL or the Pinnacle Practice Range Ball would 
kind of keep up in distance as much as well as they did. Yeah, I was going to expect that that would be kind of in between like the professional and yeah. the probably one X, kind of in the kind of 290, 280, 290 mark. Cause that's what I would have maybe expected. Mm-hmm. So uh, it was interesting to see that they performed pretty well. Um, obviously, the smash factor for them were very, very consistent every single time. So I was hitting it really solid. Um, Let's take a look here and see if there's any differences in, in the spin rate with any of them. You know, I was hitting them pretty solid, so yeah. I'm not expecting this to be too far off. Interesting, 2,000 2, RPMs uh, was the lowest yeah. to 2485 was kind of the highest. Yeah. Um, 22, you know, we're talking, that's really solid numbers. Yeah, those right? were pretty kind consistent. Of what you want to be with regards to spin yeah. rate with a driver. You know, in the low 2000s, I'm going to obviously hit the ball pretty pretty far because I hit the ball fairly high enough yeah. it's going to you know, obviously go go pretty far and the ideal spin rate usually is around about two to 2,000 to 2,500 upwards. Right. Yeah. And one thing we should mention too is while Thomas did get the best results from the Pro V1X here and the velocity, you know, it's going to be different based on the golfer because like for example, the Precept Lady IQ Plus, softer ball, going to compress easier. That will probably be the longest ball for those moderate to slower swing speeds, right? Yes. Because you're able to comp- compress the ball to a certain level, like the ideal level of compression better. Whereas someone with a faster swing uh, is going to compress the Pro V1X at that ideal level, you know, a little bit better than someone else because you got the faster swing speed, able to compress that ball faster. So. Yeah. Uh, it, it is. It does depend on the on the player, but we're just illustrating here the differences between playing different types of golf balls and how much yardage you can lose, the spin rates, um, and especially we notice it with the seven iron. I think a lot in terms of the distances, you know, because ten yards to seven iron can be a big deal. So that was the big takeaway for me is you know ball fitting at second swing can be a nice added bonus and uh, it can really help you make sure that you're getting the most out of the equipment that you do invest in. Yeah. Ball fitting is a very important uh, factor for the player must consider. Mm-hmm. Um, definitely work with your club fitter to discuss the right type of golf ball, whether you're trying to hit it higher or lower or spin it more. Mm-hmm. Um, it's important to definitely get ball fit as well. Yep, absolutely. So golfers out there, obviously this has been some great information Thomas has provided for us. I mean, golf balls are definitely not all built the same way and they will impact the way that um, your scores end up on your scorecard on the golf course. So. Um, when you're in at second swing, whether you're in the store, speaking to someone in our online fitting team, uh, ask them a little bit about getting fit for a golf ball as well, because again, that can make a big impact as well. Thomas is hitting all of his clubs today, and we saw some differences on track, man. So uh, once again, thank you for watching. And uh, if you're interested in more content like this, we'll have a lot more tests uh, in the future. Subscribe to our channel, and we'll be providing that content for you in the future. So Thomas, thanks again for hitting a bunch of shots for us. No problem.